All right, so we're moving on to stage two. Also known as Iwo Jima. Yeah, this literally looks like a bonsai charge. Yeah. So it starts with a tire flip. Uh, since we are not in Trooper, we have to flip the tire three times. Uh, don't have to get it any particular place. And then you run to a fence prop, grab your rifle, load it, and engage 16 paper targets at ranges of five to 25 yards. Now, I think this time out at 45 or so, but it's it's all close. Yep. And so with 30 out six or a major caliber, you only need one hit in the A or B zone. Right. If you're shooting intermediate, you need two. Yep. So this looks like a bonsai charge. Let's go see what it looks like. All right, so stage two, how did it go? We successfully defeated the bonsai charge. That actually, you know, this is not a World War II themed match, but world, the first stage could have been. We can make it one. And stage two is absolutely, really representative of a paper target bonsai. Yeah, they're a lot closer than you'd want them. I forgot I was gonna run up to the fence and be like, I'm from America and I'm here to help. <laughs> but I forgot. So, so we had a, a bit of a, a decision to make on this. Yes. It was 16 targets. Yep. And by the scoring rules here on paper with a heavy caliber rifle like OT-6, you needed only one round in the A or B zone to neutralize the paper. If you have a light caliber rifle, it's one in the A or two anywhere on the paper. However, this is a more complicated decision than it sounds because there's a bunch of brush in right. front of at least three, if not four of the targets. Now, what before we get to that, what's funny to me is there are 16 targets. Now, this was designed for an AR-15. You're gonna expect someone to shoot 32 rounds. Mm -hmm. so you're gonna have to reload for the last one. Correct. However, it would fit perfectly with eight round M1, where if you are willing to do one shot per target, you can clean it with two full clips. And that's what you did. That is what I chose to do. Now you didn't clean it. No, uh, I had one mic and I had one that was, uh, I hit a, a C zone, not an A or a B zone. And under these scoring rules, a miss is the same penalty as not sufficiently stopping the target. So I had 20 seconds of penalty on top of a 43 second run mm -hmm. for a total of 63. So you, you ran faster by having only one reload. Yes. I was extremely deliberate. Yep. I reloaded two times and gave every round in my gun to a target. Right. I did not want to have any misses or FTNs. And the farthest target, the one that was kind of hiding behind brush, you put three rounds onto that guy. Turns out I didn't need to. Yeah, they all hit him in the face. I could have all, I could have had a bunch of, I could have had just two clips like you did. And I had hits on every target. Some of the targets had three hits. Yep. However, as a result, by making sure I cleaned everything, I ran up with a 68 second run time. Yep. So you beat me by five seconds. Yep. Even though you had two not perfect targets. That's how it goes. No, I'm not complaining. It's yeah. just the interesting mechanism. 
and its mechanism, and it's how the scoring works. It is always a balance. When you have paper scoring, it's always a balance of, of speed versus quality of hits. When I was done at the end there, I had loaded a third uh, end block clip, and there was still rounds in the gun, and I could have just stopped and ejected and probably would have saved myself maybe those five seconds. You probably would have beat me. However, I decided since the, gun, the ammo was in the gun, shoot it. So I just indemnified myself more against the targets that I was, eh, there's stuff in the way. Sure. So anyways, you beat me by five seconds on that, and congratulations. Yeah. In fact, while we're here, you, yours is actually a 1940 gun. Yep, the serial number on this gun is uh, only five, five digits. digits. It is a 1940 manufactured receiver. And that's a gun you've shot in uh, high power, isn't it? Uh, I shot it at service rifle matches, not only in Arizona, but also at Camp Perry, as well as M1 Garand matches at Camp Perry. Yeah, so you've done a lot of work with that, right? Shot this gun a lot. And we were talking about this, and I was trying to think, of all the guns I've shot, what have I put the most rounds through? AR-15 is number one, for sure. Yep. Really, I don't know if I've fired more rounds through a M1 Garand, or an AK. Nice. Those, those are the other two that would be second. So this one is uh, 3.7 million. This is a, a wartime production gun yep. that uh, we picked up for in-range TV from the, the CMP. And we broke it with a mud test, yet you're still shooting it successfully today. Yep, this is the rifle we mud tested. This is also the rifle that we did our rifle grenade shooting with. So uh, I've still got the, the mount for the rifle grenade sight on there. How could this be? And you know what? This was, what was it rack grade, I think? Rack, rack, rack or field. It was the lowest grade of CMP gun. And it's worked flawlessly for us. Uh, oh, this is also the one we put the overpressure commercial rounds through. Yeah, oh well, yeah, we did. We've done everything to this gun. It runs flawlessly. It's not nearly as accurate as that, but it is combat rifle accurate. Didn't have any problems with it on stage one. It's, you know what? I love me some M1 Garand. Yeah, me too. Let's head on to stage three. Stage getting hot out here. It's super hot. Yeah. Let's go. Listen, my grandma, my grandpa's 30 on six. My grandma shoots a 30 30. I think he took his mirror down. Yeah, that thing I think is. Oh, yeah. 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 